Good evening. We are at the airport in Amman and we're waiting for our flight to go to Cairo. We have access to two different lounges here, the Petra Lounge as well as the Royal Jordanian Lounge. However, both of them told us that they have a three hour time limit. And since our flight's at 4.30 and it's only 11.30 right now, we can't access either of them. Fortunately, the Royal Jordanian Lounge has said if we come back in an hour, then they'll give us an extra hour for free. But none of this is on the website. Nope, so in the meantime, we are tired and hungry and we're just gonna have to wait for free food, so. It is what it is, I guess. lounge and that obviously means new lounge ratings so we are in the Royal Jordanian lounge in Amman airport so let's give you our rundown so for food we found that it was really good quality and also had quite a bit of variety more so than the Istanbul lounge but unlike the Istanbul lounge that has different hot stations this one is more of a hot and cold buffet but again very good quality food pretty good selection it's not just traditional food it has a bunch of different salads which they do phenomenally here oh and the desserts here are to die for they have a special cart and what we've never seen before is a soft serve ice cream machine which is automatic the desserts are wild so with that we give it a nine Drinks wise, they offer two types of beer. So Stella for kind of more middle of the road, but they also do local beer as well called Caracale, which I just tried and it is fantastic. Really, really good stuff. Otherwise, in terms of the spirits that are on offer, they're very high end, uh, including like syrup vodka and things like that. So having that as a selection, all for free, on the alcohol front is huge but then on top of that you have access to pretty much every soda that is locally available as well as a very impressive looking coffee bar so with that then this is definitely getting in the way as for cleanliness there's not much to say it's one of the cleanest lounges that we've been to and the chairs seem to all be in good condition with no cracks so we're giving it a nine out of ten and then on the comfort front there are a plethora of different types of seating arrangements not just in terms of chairs but in terms of like little corner shades or sofas or chronic couches all of that kind of stuff all available and every single one of them is very very nice to sit in so with that then that is definitely a nine from us on that one as well and the lowest score is going to be amenities because there actually isn't a shower room here. However, they do have smoking rooms and there are plugs, but they seem to be few and far between. So with that, we're giving it a seven. And that brings us to the grand total of 
43, which actually ties this with the Istanbul Lounge. Didn't quite think we were going to find such a worthy opponent so quickly, but here we go. It's been a pleasure. And just like that, we're on our way to Egypt. We have now officially arrived in Cairo. We've just been picked up by our driver. Hassan was very nice. And yeah, got through customs and visa stuff. Just for anybody who is going to be visiting the country, in order to get your visa, you need to go to one of the bank branches just before the official immigration queue in order to sort that out. You can pay by card um, or cash, and it's 25 bucks per person. US dollars, US. 25 US. Yes. But once you do that, then you're off to the races. So yeah, pretty straightforward once we figured that out. And Headed yeah. to our hotel now. Exactly. Can't wait. a.m. and we just woke up from a lovely nap we could have kept going but you know we want to explore Egypt yep so we are currently waiting on breakfast which is being prepped for us right now so can't wait to see what we get we have just finished an absolutely delicious breakfast with an incredible view of the pyramids and we're gonna be heading off on our tour of Old Cairo. I don't really know what to expect from this because it's been set up by our host here. I'm hoping that we get to see the Hanging Garden, which is a Coptic church, as well as the Citadel. Those seem to be the two most historically significant landmarks. But we've been a little bit confused by the currency here because all the tours are quoted to you in US dollars, same with transfers between the airport and your accommodation, but then they also tell you that you should pay in Egyptian pounds for other things that aren't your tour or transfer. Yeah, it does seem odd. It's almost like USD is kind of widely accepted as like tourist currency, whereas local currency is obviously the ones that you give to locals. Kind of like when we were in Turkey, like they accepted euros as like the tourist currency, but then like day to day it should be lira. Yeah, I think that we basically should have had both. Mm. We currently only have US dollars. I guess we'll kind of see how things pan out. Yeah, and we'll keep you updated as we go along, I suppose. Yeah, let's see what we get up to today. Should be an adventure. But yeah, super excited to be here. Can't even believe that I'm looking right now at the Great Pyramid. It's like, what, what a place so far already. We've been following a couple of tour groups and we've managed to come across this church. Apparently this is where the holy family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph came to escape persecution during the time of King Herod. Let's go in. Orthodox churches that even flourished during the Muslim invasion of Egypt. The most famous Coptic church is of course the Coptic Hanging Church, so we will be going to visit that now.
multitude of other religious buildings, all of which are very pretty and very ornate. So, whilst on the churches that we featured previously, there's also Algeri too. And St. George's Nunnery. And what I've noticed about all of these buildings is that they are very primitive in the sense that they were built out of wood and bricks, which makes sense because they were built during medieval times. But we've just come to St. George's Church and it is bright and colorful inside with gold leaf, which is quite the contrast to all of the other Coptic buildings that we've seen. Absolutely stunning. It is getting quite hot though, so I'm hoping that we do find this hanging church sometime soon. Since it's the most famous and we really want to see it. Indeed. Yeah, it only took us a few hours. It's fine. This area that is known as Old Cairo is surrounded by a fortress that was built in 30 BC called the Fortress of Babylon and that envelops what is now known as mostly Old Cairo and that's basically where we've been set up for a lot of the religious buildings that we've been into up to that point. The reason that this church, the Hanging Church, is different is not just because it's one of the oldest in the whole of Egypt, having been built in the 3rd century AD, but the reason why it's the Hanging Church is because actually the nave hangs over one of the entryways into the fortress. just arrived to the citadel and the ticket is 300 Egyptian pounds each which works out to about $13 Canadian each. So what is this site? What's the significance? Why are we here? Why is it a big deal? Well this is the citadel of Salah el-Din also known as Saladin. He was a soldier who became a general who then led successful campaigns against the Crusaders during early medieval times and as a result of that he then rose to the rank of sultan and his sultanate then actually ended up presiding over a lot of the Arab world. So as a result he ended up having this citadel built around sort of 12th, 13th century as a means of first of all having a military outpost but then that expanded into being a place of government and then with successive rulers over the course of 700 years, then more buildings were added, such as the mosques. Today, like all of the buildings are still more or less standing, but some of them have been repurposed, including one which is the National Military Museum. And it's just amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's really great to walk around. Yeah, it's just been absolutely fascinating to see and also the greatest thing is from the other side of this mosque then you just get the absolute best uninterrupted view of the city. Well worth coming here.
And what I found really interesting, again, I need to categorize and relate and understand, that's how my mind works, is that it's kind of like the Blue Mosque in Istanbul and how light and airy it is, except for the ceiling is much more like the ceiling in Hagia Sophia and how like dark it is. And it's an interesting combination of the two of them, but this one is so well preserved. A visit to the citadel. It's really cool. I think today has been really, really interesting because it shows us a completely different side to Egypt that isn't just all about the ancient stuff that we all know and love. Like obviously, there were many years in between the time of the ancient Egyptians and now, and obviously a lot of stuff happened at that time. So, getting a sense of what that was like and how that all happened is. Uh, yeah, I had never really studied anything Coptic related, so it was fascinating to learn about. Absolutely. And I think considering the fact that we haven't been feeling our best today, then uh, the fact that we've still been able to get out and get this done has been something I think we can both be pretty proud of. Yeah, we explored literally Coptic Cairo and the Citadel. It was great. Yep. And that's it for today. So until the next time, take care. And keep smiling. Psych! We're back at St. Simon's Church.